Hello folks, welcome back to our weekly NeoVim plugin video. Uh, if you're here for the first time, this is a series in which we are covering one NeoVim plugin per week. So this week I'm gonna go off the script a little bit and uh, we're gonna be covering a plugin that's not necessarily specific to NeoVim, but it is a really cool Vim plugin that I like to use very often. So we're gonna be covering a plugin called Vim vSnip. So we're covering a snip plugin. And if you don't know what snippets are, it's a it's not a concept that is exclusive to NeoVim or Vim. It's also around in some other code editors as well. So let's go ahead and hop in here and I'll show you exactly what snippets are. So let me make that bigger here. So snippets are just any predefined blocks or snippets of code that you can autocomplete quickly using a prefix. So in this case, he's doing return, extend, and then you can see here he's choosing from a list where uh, an extend is an option and it's autocompleting or it's putting all of that code with a structure to it automatically. So it's a very quick way to add uh, blocks of code or functions, classes, if statements, for statements, we're going to dig into that. So in this video, we're going to cover how to install vSnip. And uh, vSnip was a plugin actually that we installed last week when we were covering NVim CMP for completion. And also we're going to look into how to configure vSnip so that whenever you press tab, you can jump across different blocks of the code that you're uh, making a snippet of. And also at the very end, we're gonna look into how you can create your very own snippet, which is really easy, it's not hard at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my camera here and we can dive in. Let's go into my init.lua file. Many of you are familiar with this file here um, from my previous videos, but I have a require statement for plugins and then a require st statement for plugin configs and also a require statement for key mappings. So to uh, install this plugin, we're gonna use Packer as our um, package manager. So let's use Telescope, open up Telescope with leader FF there to go into a file called plugins where I like to keep all of my installation directives. Hit enter. And in this file, you'll notice right away that we have several use statements. So I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom using shift G. And uh, this is what we added last week here for NVIM CMP. NVIM CMP requires a snippet engine to work. So we went ahead last week, if you haven't watched that video, please go ahead and watch it. We went ahead and added CMP vSnip, Vim vSnip, and also friendly snippets. So these are the three plugins that we're gonna be covering in this video. Um, these three plugins don't really work that well on their own. So if you haven't already installed NVIM CMP and all of the, the plugins above it, please check out my video that we did on NVIM CMP. All right, so once those lines are added, now we have to configure the mappings for the vSnips. So I like to configure all of my plugins in a file called plugin configs. So open that up with telescope. And in here, we'll uh, go to NVIM CMP, where I have all of my CMP settings defined here, and use Z, capital A, to unfold everything there. That's the NVIM UFO plugin that I'm using to code fold. All right, so there is a lot here, and most of this we covered already in our last video. So I'm gonna focus on the snippet-specific mappings. Um, the specific, the sn sorry, the snippet-specific mappings that we're gonna be covering are tab and shift tab. Tab is to go to the next uh, section in the snippet and shift tab is to go to the previous section. And I'll show you what these sections are once we get to the snippet part of the video and the usage part. But you can see here, we're essentially just calling the vSnip available, vSnip jumpable functions. And all of these configurations are defined in the GitHub repository. And uh, specifically in this page here is talking about super tab-like mapping, where you can use tab 
to cycle through the different sections in a snippet. All right, so there's a lot I can say here, but I think it's much easier just to show you what this does. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now we're going to open up our key mappings file. All right, so this is just a Lua file. Uh, say, for example, I wanted to just write out a for loop for whatever reason. I start typing F, and you can see here I have a list that I can choose from. I can choose from for as a snippet, which will automatically create that for loop statement for me when I press enter. So now you, 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 you don't only can do this for for loops, but also you can do it for classes as well. So this one here, you look at that and you can see here that auto populates a class. That's pretty cool. So you can automatically just make the structure of a class by hitting enter on the snippet available from NVMCMP. All right, so what if, what if you want to do an if statement? Well, you type if, and you can see there's a snippet available for that if statement. Hit enter on it, and you can type your condition, and then you can type your block. Where are these snippets coming from? So when you install vSnip and friendly snippets, you have, or, or you are installing all of these structured snippets into your machine. So let's go to the friendly snippets repository where all of these snippets are hosted. Friendly snippets is a place that uh, where you can look up and install several snippets from several programming languages. So if you go into vSnip friendly snippets and then snippets, uh, you you will see here in the Lua directory that they have several examples. So you click on lua.json, which is like the configuration file for these snippets. And you'll see they have a snippet called require. The prefix is req. They have a snippet called return, assignment, local. So all of these snippets are available to you once you install friendly snippets. So I'm going to push this over to this side again, and let's give some other snippets a try. So we tried the for loop. We tried the classes. Let's try a require. All right, so our EQ, oh, there it is, require module, hit enter, and then it automatically highlights that module text inside the parentheses. And in here you can type whatever, so let's go. Yeah, so pretty cool. So you can also type like uh, class. Uh, I believe the prefix for that was CL. Here's the uh, snippet for it, or a preview of the snippet, hit enter. The class name, you can have it, have it be anything. So in this case, it will be Cantu Codes. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but when I typed Cantu Codes here, Cantu Codes also appeared at the bottom here when you were defining a variable. Um, and I'll show you how exactly snippets are smart enough to do that. Anyway, so let's continue. Once you have that, you press tab. You press tab, and then it goes into the next section of the snippet. So the new. So new will type variable. And then next, we hit tab again, and it takes us into the function parameters. So parameters. So that's pretty cool. You can cycle between different sections there using uh, tab. And that's, those are the configurations that we looked at earlier. We'll go ahead and delete that. And let's take a look at the uh, snippets from friendly snippets again. There's a really cool four line here. The prefix for that is four line. Let's see what that does. All right, so go into insert mode, four line snippet. Uh, type in a file name here some file name, hit tab, hit tab again to go to the next, and it, it cycles between these different sections. Uh, my code. So that's pretty cool. All right. So all of this was automatically generated for me and put into my buffer where my cursor was using snippets. Awesome. 
Okay, so that's neat and all, but what if I have a block that I have defined that I want to make into a snippet with different sections? Well, let's take these WK register blocks as an example. These are um, blocks that we have defined in our which key plugin video to define several mappings for the which key, which key plugin. Um, so there are some uh, which key plugins or which, which key mappings that I haven't defined that I've been meaning to define up here in uh, telescope, in the telescope section. So how do we uh, write which key mappings for this using snippets? Well, to create your own snippet, you're going to go into command mode and do v snip and then uh, open. Hit enter and then it's going to ask you what type of snippet do you want to create? Do you want to create a Lua specific snippet or a global one? Well, in this case, I want to do a Lua, so section selection one. Hit enter. And uh, you can see here that I already had a file with uh, some snippets defined for Lua. And this is a snippet I wrote earlier for WKey register. The way this syntax works is that you give it a name. In this case, the name of this snippet is called WK register. You give it a prefix, which are the keys that you type beforehand that vSnip will recognize for you to autocomplete that snippet. So WK in this in this example. So if I go into my other buffer here and I type WK, you can see here that vSnip has recognized that as a snippet because I've typed the prefix, which is WK. All right. Well, now we move along to the body, which is the, the block of code that you want as a snippet. This is where things get a little funky, in my opinion, because you have to define it as JSON. And each line needs to be in its well, an element in this array in JSON. So the first line that I want to uh, define here is WK register. You can see here that we're going to take, for example, this harpoon mapping as an example. So WK register is the first line of my code block. And then there's a, a tab. And then there's the first key that I define as my mapping. So in this case, it'll be, okay, I put a tab here and then, um, oh, no, this one here. And then I put a curly brace to first key mapping. This is where I define my different sections within my snippet. So what's this going to say is that uh, this section here is going to be selectable when I press tab. And the same for three, four, five, and six. And it can also be dynamic. So I can reference, for example, this uh, section here, like I've done so here. So anything that I type in this section in between these curly braces will also appear down here in this block or in this line of the block of the code. All right, that's pretty cool. So let's see, let's see this in action. I'm gonna go ahead and save that and quit. I wanted to define some key mappings for telescope using which key. But I don't really want to, I, I don't remember, maybe I don't remember what that uh, code block looked like. So I just type W key, WK, and uh, I can see here a little preview of that snippet that I made earlier. Hit enter. Okay, cool. I have the structure of how to make a key mapping with which key now. So I define a name, call it telescope, and you can see here as I'm typing, telescope, it live updates the other references in the snippet that I've put. Hit tab for telescope, enter, tab again, first key mapping. I'm going to make my first key mapping F. Hit tab again. My second mapping, I'm going to hit my second mapping is also going to be F and the mapping function. So in this case, it's going to be require telescope dot built in and uh, I'm going to do find files and I think I need to make this a function cool 
And I don't want a third mapping, so I'm going to delete that line. And my prefix is going to be leader. And just like that, using a snippet structure, I was able to, to quickly define another which key mapping. So F leader FF will call required telescope built in find files. Awesome. Leader FF. Yes, it did it. So there are a lot of other snippets out there and a lot of other snippet engines. I really hope you guys put these snippets to good use. Uh, like I said, I use snippets pretty much every day. I mean, normally just the built-in snippets. It's really nice to have those in there. Um, but yeah, that concludes our weekly Neo Vim uh, plugin. I'll see you guys next week.